Hello and welcome to CEO at work. And this time, it is now is at work. We are coming to you from Tata Power's Trombe Power Plant. And this power plant where we are standing right now is responsible for 50% of the total electricity production of the island city of Bombay. So yes, in Mumbai we are spoiled with good quality power, no power cuts and that's really thanks to this lovely power plant at Trombe which is managed and the electricity generated by Tata Power. It gives me great pleasure to welcome and bring on board Mr. Prabhu Sena, CEO and Managing Director of Tata Power. Thank you for having us over. Thank yes. you. Thank you, Nikunj. We are standing at a place where I have been told that 50% of the total electricity which is consumed by Mumbai cars is generated here. Absolutely right. And this is the lifeline of Mumbai uh, power supply. Uh, this plant was set up way back in 1955-56 and since then uh, all these units have been operating and supplying excellent quality, reliable, resilient power to the island city of Mumbai. So we can see this is the grid, that's where the coal landing is and uh, as far as I can see uh, this is a completely integrated process. Uh, absolutely right and this is imported coal that uh, we are using over here it's a very good quality enviro coal uh, normally in the coal that is supplied in india has nearly 30 to 40 percent ash uh, the coal that we use over here has less than three percent ash uh, the plant has fgd so in terms of uh, the environmental concerns which typically coal based plants all those have been addressed over here and that's why if you see over here, there is no smoke coming out of chimney. In a power plant and you cannot smell the pollution. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see the coal uh, stack yard uh, which is there. And uh, the coal gets uh, unloaded from the main ship onto, the, uh, onto these barges. And from barges it comes to the jetty. And everything is very neat and clean. And uh, good quality power uh, we can continue to supply to Mumbai. Power prices in Mumbai are expensive also. Yes, because it is imported coal that is there and as I mentioned to you, this is a special type of enviro coal which comes from Indonesia. Uh, over there, uh, there are certain mines which produce this type of coal. This coal, I am told, also goes right up to the New York City uh, where you have a coal-based power plant which supplies to New York City. And, uh, and it's a little expensive because of that. Also, because of the reliability of power, you need to have huge amount of N-1 and N-2 backup. And that is the reason that uh, the power cost in Mumbai is little expensive. There seems to be a renewed vigor in Tata power for shareholders, for the management and even for uh, you know members of media. The Tata power I used to track and which I've tracked a couple of years ago was more like a regulated business. There were challenges at every level. There were state discom uh, challenges. But all that is history now. Uh, I agree with you that uh, during the decade of 2010, uh, we went through a very difficult phase. Uh, we had the Mundra issue. Uh, we've come out of that. Many of the uh, legacy issues that we had, uh, we have also consolidated. Um, many of the investment that we did outside India, we divested from that. And uh, all those money have come back and whatever money that now we are putting is giving us good returns. So our, uh, that's why you see our performance has improved drastically in last few years, uh, whether it is in terms of revenue or it is in terms of uh, the PAT or the beta or the returns on capital employed. And I think uh, going forward, many of the new investments that we are going to do uh, will give us much better results and much better yields. Sir. And you will see a very different Tata Power, which is all set for next 100 years. Mr. Sina, if I look at the commentary which you have set uh, at the last analyst call, revenue would be 3x, profits would be 4x, 
return ratios which is return on equity and return on capital that will be in double digit you setting up a very high aggressive uh, you know commentary how will you achieve it because ultimately this business is a regulated business are you committing too much and too quickly so if you see the, the whole uh, narrative of our business is undergoing a change and uh, what has happened is that uh, in last few years uh, we have moved from regulated to many of the unregulated businesses now while we have been doing the large generating stations and large transmissions we are also now getting into various areas uh, which will help us to improve our returns through market interventions uh, and through the market uh, penetration that we will have just for example uh, rooftop solar Uh, was a very small business few years back uh, we used to do something like 50 crores in 2018 19 last year we ended up uh, with something like 1500 crores and we are expecting that this year it will be much more than that so you can see that in just two years from 50 to 1500 similarly in solar pumps uh, from a 30 crore business in 2018 19 last year we did about 900 crores and we are expecting that all these will grow much faster mm -hmm. uh, going forward in fact all of them i expect will grow by another five times in next five years so that's the level of uh, growth that we are seeing and many of these are not regulated so uh, so the, the it just depends how good we are in the marketing of these what sort of service that we can provide after sale service what sort of branding we do whereby it becomes a aspirational product uh, and the consumer empowerment takes place so i think uh, what we have set for ourselves is something which is definitely achievable but you also said that you will not be investing in the traditional business which is the power generation business which is largely coal based so when you are talking about your profits becoming almost 3 and a half to 4x in fy24 that means the large part of the contribution will only come from new businesses uh, absolutely right uh, many of the new business whether it is the utility scale uh, renewable of 2 gigawatt uh, that we will add every year uh, or it is the uh, rooftop solar or the solar pumps or the manufacturing we are setting up the first 4 uh, gigawatt uh, cell and module manufacturing plant mm -hmm. in fact uh, uh, we have been running a 500 megawatt cell and module plant for last 30 years mm -hmm. not many people know that we were one of the first not only in our country but globally also to set up a uh, manufacturing for cell and modules in bangalore in 1992 so i think many of the things that we are doing uh, we were sub optimal earlier we are now going to scale and all these will give us the type of opportunities that we earlier thought was never possible and uh, what we have set for ourselves we have a very clear cut road map it is not that it is uh, uh, something which has just come as, as on a whiff uh, we have a clear cut road map of implementation how do we deploy it how do we train our manpower to take up uh, the leadership position expect the traditional generation business to grow or it will just be a low growth business now so our traditional business which is our thermal coal will not grow okay. uh, we have taken a stand that we will not add any coal capacity of yes. course some gas capacities will get added uh, especially for some of our group companies where uh, the those small projects yeah th those are small projects not very large projects uh, some hydro capacities will get added in terms of pump storage activities mm -hmm. but uh, uh, the main growth will come out of our renewable business and that includes everything from manufacturing to epc to utility scale to rooftop to solar pump uh, ev business will grow very much uh, we will become the pan india largest suppliers as well as a service provider of ev charging uh, we will also grow can that be a new moving business for you uh, not at present uh, we expect that once the penetration of electric vehicles increases then it will become because that many more homes will require everyone who buys an electric vehicle mm -hmm. will have a home charger uh, you, they will require public charging for topping up the charging that they require to do uh, buses will become public transportation will become mm -hmm. uh, uh, electric vehicle mm -hmm. so 
we will definitely see a huge amount of uh, growth and momentum mm. but i would not say that it will uh, really be a big number in terms of uh, both revenue and in terms of the returns but it will be a substantial number uh, the big numbers of course are renewable big numbers will also be in what will the numbers like uh, i don't have exact numbers uh, but uh, i can definitely share with you that uh, it is uh, the uh, present our renewable capacity is 4 gigawatt and another 1.5 is under implementation uh, we expect that by 2027 will become something like 20 gigawatt so almost five times of what you currently have that is only in solar that is only in the renewable only in which includes solar it will include the wind it will also have wind is small for you uh, no we are uh, today 1 gigawatt of wind and uh, the new solutions that we are giving mm. uh, are hybrid solutions of solar and wind together mm. uh, we'll also have some of uh, storage solutions coming up because when you have to give 24/7 you need to ensure that you have uh, power during periods when this uh, sun or the wind power plants are not mm. generating and i think uh, we will also be integrating with some of the other solutions that we have in mind uh, at some stage we will integrate hydrogen also so that uh, uh, we are able to give uh, uh, consistent supply of power to the consumers so the place where we standing this power plant behind us yes it is an operational power plant this is operational this is a gas based okay. unit of 180 megawatt okay uh, this is a coal based unit of 500 megawatt and then if you see on the right hand side mm -hmm. that's the uh, 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 250 megawatt how come it does not uh, we are standing in a operational power plant yeah as we speak the machines are on the turbines are moving yeah absolutely i cannot i cannot feel anything i cannot uh, smell anything how are you managing it in middle of the city because this is again the old traditional thermal and gas based power plants oil power plants uh, uh, yeah this is a gas based this is a coal based and uh, the uh, type of operations that mm -hmm. we do we ensure that there is absolute cleanliness you would mm -hmm. see yes uh, i can see green roof park garden around the plant uh, there is no sound mm -hmm. so so this is the uh, this is the dna of the company mm -hmm. whereby we run plants very efficiently see there is lot of greenery and lot of mangroves are there yes. and uh, we have been protecting that for last more than 60 years in fact uh, the mangrove area has increased over a period of time mm -hmm. and uh, we we uh, take pride that we do all our work uh, taking care of the nature taking care of sustainability you know i, I must share with our viewers that we are standing in in power plant which is a gas based power plant thermal power plant and there is absolutely no sound it feels like it in our studio where you can actually it is completely enveloped with the outside sound and that is i think the point which i just want to bring out to our viewers that yes power plants is managed well in middle of the city they can be ESG compliant We are now at the control center of the Tata Power Trombe plant, and this, in a sense, is the place from where the large part of Mumbai's uh, distribution and transmission is controlled. So, Mr. Singh, tell us about this place. So, this is the control center for the transmission supply that goes to Mumbai, the whole of Mumbai. Uh, for the distribution, uh, it is the control for South Mumbai and part of North Mumbai. So, all the consumers of best and all the consumers of Tata Power distribution, uh, we control the supply of electricity to them. Uh, for transmission, of course, uh, the whole of supply comes over here and. it controls the supply that is given to the mumbai city so what you see over here is a real time uh, supply of power which is from the embedded generation which is in mumbai generated the, here which is the trombe plant from where uh, nearly 930 megawatt is generated and then we have the hydro plants which is another 450 megawatt and then there is the dahanu plant uh, from where 500 megawatt comes over and above that of course there is uh, based on the load requirement the supply comes through the transmission system from outside mumbai into mumbai and uh, you can see uh, today's load which is about 3400 megawatt uh, that is supplied uh, and it is supplied again uh, there are different types of 
power uh, plants from where the power comes uh, there are solar plants there are wind plants uh, there are hydro plants in uh, other parts of maharashtra uh, there are coal based plants from other parts of maharashtra as also from other states so all that comes here and is controlled on real time basis based on the necessity uh, of the plant to operate and also on merit order so it's actually the nerve center of supply of electricity so you are distributing power in orissa something which we spoke about you are distributing uh, uh, also in parts of rajasthan bombay really has been a big success story how large can the distribution business become for tata power because as more and more efficiency has to kick in distribution efficiency now is something which is, has been the need of the hour so uh, we have 9 million consumers in uh, odisha mm -hmm. uh, we have about uh, 1.7 million consumers in uh, in delhi and we have 0.7 million consumers in mumbai mm -hmm. now this uh, business uh, in the private sector we are the biggest with 12 million customers uh, uh, rest um, uh, the private rest of the private companies have about 6 million customers so so to that extent we are the biggest in the country is this an annuity business uh, this is a annuity plus performance business so uh, there is a return on equity based on the capex that you incur but there is also value added services and performance improvements that you carry out and you get a incentive on that so it's a mix of uh, the annuity plus the uh, performance benefits that one are you investing in this business yes we are investing because whatever uh, we invest we get a return on equity and this business requires continuous investment to upgrade the system that means the transformer the switch gear the cables the conductor also the load increases so over a period of time we have seen that the consumption patterns have increased new colonies have come new buildings have come new office complexes have come and you need to cater to that requirement like mumbai a lot of metro stations have come the new stations and we need to ensure that the supply is given to them also and uh, these are uh, requirements of any growing city or any growing uh, state to that extent the tata group now at various group levels even at tata sons level is merging the subsidiaries uh, tata motors has done that tata steel has done that and uh, tata uh, i think uh, tata consumer to a large extent has done that with merging tata coffee bag tata power also has subsidiaries is tata power the next one to move now yes so tata power is already uh, on that track uh, you would have seen that we have created a renewable platform yes. and the purpose of creating the renewable platform was that we had large number of subsidiaries mm -hmm. in uh, the renewable business and uh, we are now merging all of them into one single entity so uh, we had utility scale businesses we had rooftop solar pumps manufacturing so all of them will get merged into one single entity that is the tata power renewable energy uh, entity and uh, uh, and to that extent uh, we will become much slimmer in terms of the number of companies that how many subsidies you will eventually have let's say in 3 years uh, so uh, we are looking at uh, 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 reducing it to less than 20 subsidiaries over a period of time do you have right now uh, right now we have something like 90 90 will come down to 20 yeah so so that's the uh, uh, because we have also got some uh, uh, joint venture companies like odisha is a joint venture with odisha government or the delhi distribution or the mithun power mm -hmm. so some of those will have to exist as this separate uh, joint venture companies mm -hmm. but uh, rest of the companies we are now merging to see that uh, all becomes part of tata power the numbers which we spoke about which we also shared in the public domain Uh, in terms of profitability growth in terms of return ratios all that could be done with the existing capital you have enough equity and you have enough cash flow to support what you shared with us uh, absolutely right of course we will have to keep on taking debt for the new capacity additions that will happen typically for the renewable uh, uh, capacities that we will be yeah. adding but those will again be uh, within the prudential norms under which we work uh our debt equity ratio which mm -hmm. has now come to a level of about 1.6 we expect that even with the enhanced uh, debt that will come for the renewable business will be within that range three four years ago tata power in a sense was not exactly the best performing company for the tata group now things have come back 
will you be a large contributor to the tata group do you think the terrain in terms of the electricity sector the regulation in terms of relationship with discom how essentially recoveries are moving can tata power now be a high growth company for the tatas and a great return generator for the shareholders uh, absolutely right uh, as i mentioned to you earlier uh, our uh, revenues have increased by nearly 50% in last two years our uh, profit has improved by nearly 80% in last two years and we do expect that now that our balance sheet is much stronger and the new growth plans that we have where uh, most of them are asset light uh, growth areas we do expect that uh, uh, we will be a big contributor in the group in terms of our profitability and uh, we will continue to be one of the leading companies uh, within the group so can i say that the car has just hit the highway and the highway right now is clear and soon you will be cruising at 150 well i don't know <laughs> whatever is the right speed we will cruise at that uh, but what uh, i can tell you is that we have a very clear cut strategy of what needs to be done uh, and uh, we are very confident of achieving and the vision is back in your voice you are not the mr sena i used to speak to pre covid that time you were a bit nervous about the regulation and how essentially state uh, dues were moving I agree with you that uh, th uh, things have changed. Uh, things have internally changed within the company, and we are more confident uh, of uh, the type of uh, work that we are doing and the type of uh, growth that we are seeing. We are also seeing that uh, there have been uh, changes, uh, systematic changes, also in the policy environment, in the regulatory environment, and all those are giving us the confidence uh, that we are on the right track. uh we will be big players in renewable we will be big players in ev we will be big players in uh, uh, the uh, distribution business and transmission business in fact recently we uh, won some of the uh, yes. stressed assets which were there and uh, we are existing operations will continue to perform very well because our existing operations continues to give us huge amount of cash for our growth businesses so uh, you know, so i personally feel that uh, we are in a good wicket right now uh, our growth trajectory that we have uh, shared uh, we are confident of achieving it uh, the dna of the organization is of innovation of doing new things and we will continue to follow that in the future years what is that one thing that keeps you charged up personally on the power business you have to really keep yourself also charged up personally so i think uh, what is important is uh, the type of innovation that is happening that's for the company sir but okay the sima as an individual uh, as a individual you read a lot what is your uh, hobby yeah i read a lot i i, uh, I do a lot of reading uh, both uh, uh, the normal fiction reading as well as uh, in my subject uh, i keep on uh, up, keeping myself abreast with what's happening uh i also play a few games so uh, i i end up playing playing a uh, badminton then table tennis and sunday golf is something that i always look forward to if there is a sign board yeah. on which you have to put a quote and your favorite quote what will be that quote uh, the favorite quote would be that uh, i need to continue continuously learn uh, and i think uh, the learning urge the fire to learn new things i think that's the most important thing and the second thing is that uh, we should have the humility to say that i don't know and i want to learn more and who's one person who's influenced you the most in life oh well uh, uh, there are whole lot of people it is very difficult <laughs> to say one person but there are whole lot of people uh, there have been lot of colleagues lot of seniors who have been there parents Uh, teachers uh, the other day i was looking at my yearbook uh, the year i passed out from school and i was seeing the quotes of my then principal who is no more now and uh, and he had talked about three things in life uh, that uh, uh, as a part of parting gift uh, when we were leaving school he said and uh, he said that how important it is to have ethics uh, the discipline of doing the things right and caring for people and i think uh, those stand very good to me uh, not only as a, a human being but also that is as a professional i find that that is always the uh, thing that guides me and fortunately within the tata group these are the ethos on which we live and i continue to practice that
Well, you know, sir, first time I'm interacting with you post-COVID uh, in person. So really nice to meet you. That warmth is back. Nothing like meeting a person, and uh, nothing like meeting someone in person. But thank you so very much on behalf from everyone from Etina for giving us tour of this wonderful generation unit. I for one never imagined that in middle of Mumbai we could be. walking and talking and understanding how power generation is done how the distribution is done and a capacity which perhaps is completely esg compliant you cannot feel the heat of electricity generation here and nor can you smell that there is any kind of an pollution even though there is a thermal power plant here thank you so very much and thank you for having us thank you thank you very much